top questions I get on this channel is whether glycerin is a good substitute for alcohol when making flavors, essences, or extracts. Now, the, the answer is not too difficult, but it does require some explanation so that you can use this properly. Uh, so let me show you that answer. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink, and the first thing I really need to do is thank my Patreons. Their support actually allows me to make videos like this because let's face it, this isn't going to be a viral YouTube hit. So if you're into the drink world and into making your drinks, this is important information because you're going to make better drinks with this information, but it's not a very wide topic. So thanks to my Patreons for their support. Now, this question usually fits into like three categories about using glycerin. The first one is often people are concerned about their health and they want to remove as much ethanol or alcohol from their diet as possible. So glycerin, they've heard, is a substitute. So they want to know how good of a substitute it is. The second reason is religious reasons. So for a lot of Muslims, consuming alcohol is not halal. So it, they try to remove it from the equation. And third is that in some countries, alcohol is hard to get and or it's very expensive because it has high taxes. So whatever your reasons for this, I will give you an explanation. It's all the same. So let me show you with a little game whether glycerin is a good substitute for alcohol. To play this game is pretty simple. It's just going to help you determine what glycerin can dissolve and what it can't dissolve. And there's three simple rules. So I'll give them to you now. Number one. O's go with O's. And number two is C's go with C's. So just like the match game, you have to match things up. So if you look at water, everybody knows it's H2O and it looks like this. So two hydrogens and an oxygen. We're focusing on these O's in rule number one. Now, if you look at ethanol, I'm just going to short form it, E-T-O-H, and it looks like this. So the O in ethanol goes with the O in water. That's why it dissolves. And if you're to look at uh, something with a lot of carbons in it, they would dissolve in ethanol but not water. So a good example, that's octane, the fuel octane. It's just a string of eight carbons. So CH3, CH2 times eight, basically. And that won't dissolve in water, but it, it may dissolve, not fully dissolve, but it will dissolve some in ethanol. So rule number three is there's a ratio of four carbons to one oxygen. So it's not a 10, it's a one. But the idea is that when you're looking at a molecule, and I'm gonna draw a few here to play, uh, as long as there's one oxygen for every four carbons, it's going to be slightly soluble in water, uh, most likely always soluble in ethanol. Ethanol is just a fantastic solvent. It dissolves everything. That's why it's still used so much today. So let me draw you a molecule of glycerin and this will be the first step. So you can see that glycerin has three carbons and three alcohol groups. So an OH group is an alcohol group, same as this one up here. It doesn't actually make it alcohol. You'll find out shortly that alcohol groups are pretty much on all sorts of things. It doesn't have the effect of alcohol. But this is what glycerin looks like. And each one of these OH groups acts, you know, draws in more water soluble stuff. Whereas the carbons, they're kind of protected. So there's actually, the way these hydrogens and oxygens form, it's almost like a little shield that goes around glycerin and kind of doesn't allow other carbons to interact with these carbons. So, it's one of those things that, this is why glycerin works for some things, but not a lot of things. It's actually not a great solvent. It's okay for some stuff, but when you're making soda, you need to get a lot of flavor into your concentrates so that you can make a syrup and then you can make a soda. And again, if you, if you just stumbled upon this video, now we're talking flavor making. 
Go check out how to make a flavor and the video on how to make an essence and that'll help you understand some of this. But the idea is that glycerin is going to dissolve things with oxygen in them. So let, everybody talks about, let's say, vanilla. So let me draw you a molecule of vanilla or vanillin. Uh, I believe that there is double bonds in there. So this is vanillin. It's the main compound in vanilla. So this, what they don't tell you is that it's mostly soluble in water or it is soluble in water at uh, 10 grams per liter in water. Again, these O's here react with, or basically bond with the hydrogen. It's called hydrogen bonding, but we're just talking about oxygen. So it's got three of them. And so they're gonna be able to go into water. So it actually dissolves at 10 grams per liter. Now in glycerin, you can get it up to 50 grams per liter. So it is a better solvent for vanilla, but ethanol, it's basically miscible. So that means any amount of this will dissolve with any amount of ethanol. So ethanol has some advantages where glycerin doesn't. But again, all of these oxygens, uh, rule number three, a uh, ratio of four carbons to one oxygen. So you got eight carbons and three oxygens. So it's well within this. So it's almost uh, two to one, pretty close, 2.3 to one. And so that's why it's soluble in water and soluble in glycerin. Now, if I were to draw you, this is ethan or octanal, and it's a chain of eight carbons. If you've watched a video on how to make an orange soda, uh, this is one of the key components. So that's octanal. And basically it's an eight chain carbon. It is not soluble in glycerin. So you're gonna get zero in glycerin, but it's fully soluble in ethanol. Citrus flavors and citrus oils don't do so well in glycerin because they tend to have some of the terpenes, which are mostly carbon. Uh, some of them have an oxygen, but they're often a ratio of eight to one. So. Uh, like this and they don't do well in glycerin at all. In fact, it's very hard to get a lot of citrus oils dissolved in glycerin But this has zero in glycerin But if I were to show you propylene glycol, which is an alternative to glycerin and a better component for this It does uh, octanal does dissolve in propylene glycol. So let me show you that Just short form it so it looks like this So you'll notice that it's very similar to glycerin, except for it's missing one alcohol group. So this alcohol group here, and it's a methyl group there. This group here allows it to interact with these carbons. So it is, this becomes soluble in this because of this component right here. Now it doesn't mean propylene glycol can dissolve all sorts of things. It, it's better than glycerin, but definitely not as good as ethanol. Uh, ethanol being drinking alcohol. So if you're looking for a non-alcoholic solvent, propylene glycol is probably your safer bet, but you'll find that some things that are soluble in glycerin are not solu soluble in propylene glycol and vice versa. So it becomes knowing your compounds. And again, how do you know all these compounds? Well, you have to kind of Studying chemistry helps, though I'm gonna guide you through it because it's not that difficult and it's not something you really need to know too much about. So over on my Patreon page, you'll find a basically a list of flavor compounds, uh, essential oils and such, with their solubility in propylene glycol, glycerin, and ethanol. And as you read through that, you'll be able to say, well, I, I can make it in glycerin or I can make it in propylene glycol. Some of them, not soluble in either, only soluble in ethanol. 
So that may limit how you make sodas. But if it's a concern that you don't want to use ethanol, these are your two other options. I would opt for this one most of the time if I wasn't using ethanol. So vanilla works in glycerin and it works in propylene glycol as well. So there are lots of other compounds, literally thousands of compounds. So knowing each one, I'll explain a little bit more about that in the next section. Now that you have a basic understanding of glycerin, let's go through a couple examples and see whether it will extract these compounds or not. So the first one is pinene. This one is uh, found in juniper berries uh, and obviously gin. It's a terpene, but you'll notice that there are no oxygens on this. And that means it's not going to be soluble in glycerin and it's not really soluble in water, about four milligrams per liter. Now, four milligrams per liter is four parts per million. So if you've watched the uh, video on how to formulate a flavor, you'll know that we can still detect that as humans, but it's not a very strong flavor. So this is one of the problems with non-alcoholic gins is that if you have no alcohol, you can't actually keep the pinene into the solution because of the molecular structure of glycerin, it's not much help with pinene. And even propylene glycol is suspect on it. Uh, pinene really, really, really just needs alcohol. So if you're looking at formulating non-alcoholic drinks with juniper, it might be difficult. Now this one is cinnamaldehyde. It is a key component of cinnamon oil and it is partially soluble in water. One to two grams per liter, depending on temperature. It's not soluble in glycerin, but it is soluble in propylene glycol. So for any cinnamon based beverages that you wanna make, propylene glycol is the one you wanna go with. So this molecule is eugenol. You can see that it has two oxygens and I believe the ratio is five to one, five carbons to one oxygen. So it does dissolve in glycerin and it does dissolve in propylene glycol but it is not soluble in water and it will dissolve in alcohol, of course. So this is a good one to start with if you're doing a flavor and you wanna incorporate clove. So now this is menthol. It is obviously the key component in mint, spearmint, peppermint, and it is not soluble in glycerin, but it is soluble in alcohol and propylene glycol. And it's up to 50% in propylene glycol according to some research sites. So uh, that's a good choice if you're working with mint oils or spearmint oils. Let's talk about orange oil for a second because it's a good example of one where you could have problems with because unless you're using alcohol because all the compounds in orange oil are soluble in alcohol. But for example, if you're using limonene, well, there'll be limonene in it. It will not dissolve in propylene glycol but it will dissolve in the glycerin. But you're also gonna have octanal and decanal, which we talked about uh, in the previous section, and they're soluble in propylene glycol, but not glycerin. So it's a choice of you're going to miss out on some of the flavor compounds, uh, decanal being the most important for an orange flavor. So that's what we extracted in the orange soda video. So this is one of the, the problems with glycerin and propylene glycol. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to extract all the compounds you want, so you're gonna have to make a choice. So let's talk a little bit about health concerns. There should be none because glycerin is a natural product. Uh, our bodies actually produce it or use it. It's how we store fat. So if you've heard of triglycerides, that's basically glycerin with the hydrogens removed from the alcohol groups and then a fatty acid attached to those. And those fatty acids are often, sometimes you'll know them as omega-3, omega-6, and omega-9 fatty acids. So that's kind of what fat is. Now, when you burn fat, you're releasing glycerin into your body and your body knows how to handle it. The only concern with it that I have is you can't drink this stuff straight, not because it will cause any physiological problems internally or long-term health issues. It will cause, how do we put this delicately? Explosive diarrhea. 
it is it's basically a laxative if you use it in that purpose so you can use it in sodas and you can use it in beverages, but you have to dilute it down with either simple syrup or you don't want to be drinking ounces of this. So it's not a good idea to make a flavor syrup. So you're dissolving your essential oils in pure glycerin and then adding that directly into a soda. Always make your extract or your essence, add that to simple syrup, and then add that to your soda. Same with propylene glycol. It's a product that your body knows how to handle. When you consume propylene glycol, your body turns it into lactic acid. And your lac and lactic acid or lactate can be used by all cells in your body as fuel, it turns into carbon dioxide and water. Now, when it comes to cost, you're not gonna find that this is actually much cheaper, though if you buy in bulk, it is. But this one liter bottle of propylene glycol is about 20 to $24 Canadian, so like $18 American. And, you know, it's slightly cheaper, probably about three quarters the cost of a bottle of vodka. But again, vodka at times can be the same price as this. So you'll have to shop around. Again, don't buy the cheapest stuff. Uh, sometimes that has water in it. Look for 99% or pure glycerin or pure propylene glycol, those are what you want to use. If they have any water in them, that's going to reduce the solvent power of these solutions. And you want it as strong as possible. Sorry to disappoint you if you found that glycerin's not a good substitute for alcohol. It's okay, it wouldn't be one I would go to. I'd go to propylene glycol um, more often than not. But for my purposes, ethanol still works. It's basically the same cost. I'm not worried about the health concerns because by the time you dilute it in the soda, it's down to less than 0.1% in your soda. And your body already produces alcohol. So for example, if you drink apple cider, fresh pressed, or even eat an apple, the pectin in, your in the apple can often break down and you can produce up to 600 milligrams of methanol, not just ethanol, but methanol but your body's perfectly capable of handling that. So in small amounts, the alcohol is not a concern for me. Uh, again, the human body is quite capable of handling it because we deal with alcohols through our digestive system and metabolic processes all the time. So for me, alcohol is the go-to one. I'll continue to use it. However, if there's some an interesting case where I can use propylene glycol in the future, I will do it as an example, and I'll try to include it in more videos if it works for what I'm doing. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.